Coming up on this week's Diz Pod, we get big, exciting news on Tiana's Bayou Adventure Ride. Our featured attraction is The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. We visit Jack and Rose on Titanic and talk about our pending ride on Tron with Conversations with Neil. I'm the goat of Disney. I eat everything. All right, everybody, it's Corey story time. So kick back, relax, put your feet up, and get ready to listen to this one. We're not just going to report Disney news and just talk about it. I mean, that's already been done a million times. But then again, we do love Disney news. We will talk about some. This is not your grandfather's Disney podcast. So I'm watching this new thing on Netflix. Let's talk about it. So Tammy has me running all over Disney World looking for this new lounge fly. Jillian loves China so much that if she was ever lost, she would need a tag on her shirt that says, If lost, return me to China. Jacob's my dude. Jacob is my tech man. He makes me sound good. And welcome to episode number seven already. It's like the football season. Just the weeks just come and go. Can't believe we're already here at week seven. Podcasting away. Welcome to the Diz Pod. I am your host, Corey Ellis, from the hit live streaming YouTube channel from Disney World and sometimes Universal but mostly Diz. It is the Diz Pod. Welcome to the Diz Pod. We've got lots to cover as always, trying to make this as fun and exciting and energetic as we can. It's mostly Diz, but a little bit of something else, which is me. Things we will cover today is I will be doing Diz Screenplay Theater, and I chose not one, but two of my favorite scenes from Titanic which is one of my favorite movies of all time. Tiana's Bayou Adventure also finally has a storyline in which the ride will follow, and we are excited to relay that to you if you have not heard yet. And I'll comment on that, of course. Uh, Some more Disney Parks blog articles we'll talk about, and we feature none other than the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh ride and let's not forget we are talking to Neil today and when Neil speaks what do we do we listen this week's attraction I chose the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh and who doesn't like Winnie the Pooh number one and who doesn't like the Winnie the Pooh ride so let's get right into it This dark ride whisks guests into the pages of a Winnie the Pooh storybook to experience moments of the classic 1977 Disney film, The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh is located in Fantasyland at the Magic Kingdom across from the Seven Dwarves Mine Train and near the Mad Tea Party. Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh opened on June 5th, 1999, replacing Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, an original opening day attraction at Magic Kingdom. According to Imagineer Kevin Rafferty, voice actor Paul Winchell gave his final performance as Tigger for this attraction. Imagineers also paid tribute to Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. During the scene in Owl's house, there is a framed picture on the wall just as you enter the room of Mr. Toad handing over a deed to Owl. Also look for a picture of Pooh and a mole. This I didn't know, and I'm not sure where that is. Uh, Email us at livingindiz at gmail.com if you actually know where that is. I'm going to be looking for it now. In 2010, the Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh received an interactive queue where guests could play in Rabbit's Garden and play with a digital honey board. Once aboard the honeypot, guests enter the pages of a Winnie the Pooh storybook and ride through scenes from the Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh film, such as The Blustery Day, 
Meeting Tigger, Pooh's Heffalump in Woozle Dream, The Flood, and finally Pooh getting to enjoy some honey. This attraction is a gentle dark ride but is unique in that the ride vehicle honey pots gently move up and down and at one point to simulate bouncing along with Tigger. Guests enter the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh queue next to Pooh's home with Mr. Sanders above the door. The first part of this queue winds through interactive elements and is mostly outdoors. The rest of the queue is mostly covered and consists of series of switchbacks dotted with Winnie the Pooh book pages. Aboard the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh, guests ride in an oversized honeypot. There are two rows per honeypot with a capacity of two to three guests per row. Cast members will load two adults plus one small child or one adult plus two small children. Larger adults can be seated on their own or in their own row. Uh, this is rarely necessary. Guests sit on a hard bench with a back. There is a single pull-down lap bar on all riders. Guests sit on a hard bench with a back. There is a single pull-down lap bar for all riders in each row. Guests will need to step over a moderate about 12 inches wall uh, to enter the honeypot. Guests must transfer from a standard wheelchair to experience this attraction. There is a wheelchair-capable honeypot as well. There are no health or safety advisories for uh, this ride. There is no height requirement for this ride. Every member of the family can enjoy this together. Inclement weather does not impact this ride. And that is all you need to know about the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Disney Parks Blog News. Let's visit Disney Parks Blog as I like to do each podcast and try to find some interesting types of articles to go over. And, you know, a lot of times I look for things that are away from the daily news. So, Haley Sumangala from Public Relations, she's an intern. At Walt Disney World wrote this article on Thursday, March 2nd, 2023 on Disney Parks blog. She's talking about the five totally tropical to-dos when Typhoon Lagoon reopens March 19th. And let's visit these five tropical must-dos. Light up the night at H2O Glow After Hours. Glow the night away during H2O Glow After Hours at Typhoon Lagoon starting May 20th, complete with an electric DJ dance party, complimentary ice cream treats, popcorn, and select beverages. A glow, glorious? I can't even say that word. Instead of glorious, they used G L O W dash R I O U S. A glorious atmosphere and beyond. H2O After Hours allows families to spend time at Typhoon Lagoon for hours after it closes, given quick access to favorite attractions throughout the illuminated park. Be sure to get your tickets tomorrow for a night to remember at the water park, and um, that was actually for today, technically. Those opened up. Number two, can't miss thrilling attractions await. For a thrill-filled day at Typhoon Lagoon, check out guest favorite attractions like the action-packed 400-foot-long water coaster, Crush and Gusher, or Humunga Kawabunga, which offers three high-energy body slides to plunge guests down the steep incline of Mount Mayday. Families can join the fun, too, with the fast-paced, adrenaline-filled family raft attraction, Miss Adventure Falls. Little ones can adventure down mini water slides in the kitty-friendly Ketchikitty Creek, which is a really cool name. The names they come up in this with uh, parks like this are pretty cool. Number three, the perfect place to chill. 
This tropical paradise is the ideal spot to kick back on your trip to Walt Disney World with plenty of spaces to unwind. Sunbathe with ease as you float down the scenic Lazy River, Castaway Creek, for a peaceful tour of the entire park. Beachcomber shacks offer a private outdoor oasis away from the buzz of the rest of the park for guests to relax. These spaces are available for guests to rent during their visit to Typhoon Lagoon and offer perks like cushioned seating, towels, a locker, and souvenir reusable mugs to make sure you feel like you're in paradise. Number four, devour delicious new food and beverage offerings. That sounds like me. Hello. Cool off with new sweets and treats that are perfect for a day at the water park, including the pineapple upside down cone available at Happy Landings and a barbecue chicken and grilled pineapple flatbread available at Leaning Palms. And I have to say, looking at the picture of that, it looks amazed is. That would be, that'd be on my list. Next time I go to Typhoon Lagoon, we will get that. And we will try it and we will review it on stream as we always do. And listen to this. When I saw this, I said, oh, that's a must get. Remember that delicious Moana cone from World Princess Week? Well, the dessert featuring Dole Whip strawberry swirled with vanilla is back for guests to enjoy. As well as the popular Hey Hey cone made from Dole Whip, pineapple, and raspberry which is available at the Snack Shack. Number five, surfs up at the surf pool. Did you know that the Typhoon Lagoon surf pool is the largest wave pool in North America? With a picturesque view of the iconic Mount May Day, guests of all ages can catch gnarly waves while body surfing in the water. For those who want to test their skills even further, hang 10 with a private surf session in the surf pool. Open Surf will also be available this year for surfers or small groups that want to surf, but do not need the entire pool to themselves. No matter what the experience level, spend time riding waves before or after the park closes to polish your skills. Be sure to add Typhoon Lagoon to your itinerary the next time you visit Walt Disney World. And don't forget to purchase your H2O Glow after hour tickets, which is March 3rd. We'll see you at Typhoon Lagoon starting March 19th, says Disney. I already for some really exciting news. We've only speculated this since it was announced. And I'm talking about Tiana and what the storyline will be for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. This also uh, was uh, obtained from Disney Parks blog. And what's weird, it says Disneyland Resort is where it was written from. Uh, Ken Rafferty Jr. wrote this, and this was published on February 3rd, which is today. And it says, this, the title is New Storyline Details Revealed for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. I am reading this for the first time, as you may be hearing it for the first time. So let's go. At a young age, Tiana developed a deep passion for cooking and began to dream of one day owning her own business. Her father, James, taught her that good food brings folks together. One of the most exciting parts of Tiana's Bayou Adventure is that we're going to see where Tiana's life has taken her following the success of Tiana's Palace, a restaurant she had dreamed of owning and worked so hard to make come true. Walt Disney Imagineering is creating an original next chapter story for Tiana. Within the attraction queue, guests will discover that she continues to grow her business with Tiana's Foods, an employee-owned cooperative. Combining her talents with those of the local community, Tiana has transformed an aging salt mine and built a beloved brand. The endeavor began when Tiana purchased the salt mine and the area surrounding the large salt dome it operated from. With the help of her mother Eudora, Naveen, Lewis, and fellow owners of the cooperative, Tiana revived the old salt mine and the surrounding land, 
growing a wide array of vegetables, herbs, and spices for her recipes. This multifaceted enterprise has turned the aging salt mine into a space that has come alive. Completed with a boutique farm and both a working teaching, complete with a boutique farm and both working and teaching kitchen, Tiana's Foods is where Tiana and her colleagues create all sorts of new products that they are bringing to the world, including a line of original hot sauces. Tiana wants to give a big thanks to her family and friends and the entire community for all the support they've given her by throwing an amazing party during Mardi Gras season. When it turns out that there's been a bit of a mix-up with the party preparations, Tiana invites us to meet her at Tiana's Foods to help with the missing ingredient for the party. When we arrive, we may see Tiana spruced up in the company's facilities with vibrant art from local artists. Food for the party is being prepared and beignets are being loaded into the crates for the celebration. All kinds of preparations are underway for the journey into the bayou with Tiana, along with new and familiar friends from the animated film. Picking up where they left off, Tiana continues bringing people together with Tiana's Foods, another treasured meeting place to spend time together and celebrate a diverse community. Tiana is also working with cooperative members to teach gardening and cooking to children of all ages and inspiring other women to run successful businesses as the brand grows nationwide. Continue following along with the Disney Parks blog for updates relating to Tiana's Bayou Adventure as it makes its way to Walt Disney World and Disneyland Resort in 2024. So this is exciting. We've wanted to get some kind of storyline. We're always starved for new Disney news. And there it is. It sounds like fun. I'm glad that they incorporated Mardi Gras. And the story, the storyline sounds fine to me. And I'm sure just reading it is not going to do it justice to what the Imagineers have in store for all of us park goers. Now, here's the two questions I have. Are we going to exit this ride to the gift shop and be able to buy some of Tiana's foods, her spices? This would be amazing. And how about, I talked about this weeks ago probably while riding Space Mountain. I'm sorry, probably. Huh? It's a ride that starts with S. No, but um, when I rode Splash Mountain, I believe I, I talked about it several times on stream that I hope that we can smell beignets on the ride. And how cool would it be to have warm beignets ready to go? What? What? Did I just give Disney an idea if they didn't have that already? I mean... Come on, you can exit. There can be some food to be had, and there can also be merch to be had. And, you know, merch being clothes, toys, food, canned food, packaged food, as far as the spices go. This is more, ex I'm more excited now than I've ever been. This could be something really, really great. Let's hope that Disney doesn't swing and miss on any of this, including those ideas that I had. Uh, and you know what? It's like I always say, you do not doubt the Imagineers until you have reason to. And in my opinion, they haven't given us reason to. If you're about to start planning your next vacation, book your next vacation with your magical adventures await. Claudia is creating Disney adventures worldwide. She can create a magical adventure to Walt Disney World Florida, any Disney park worldwide, Disney Cruise Lines, Alani Resort in Hawaii, guided group vacation with Adventures by Disney, and she's also a Universal Studios expert. If you book with her, her services are free. Disney pays her to help you create a seamless, magical adventure. Her availability is really unmatched. You can contact her Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., Saturday and Sunday, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Make your magical planner Claudia Anderson from Your Magical Adventures await, 956-455-8049, or check her out on Instagram with instant message, Claudia Anderson, all one word. 
That's C-L-A-U-D-I-A-I-N-D-R-I-D-S-O-N. And as a special bonus, if you book with her, all traveling members of your party will receive a special Living in Diz luggage tag. So make sure you let her know that we sent you. If you're a fan of our channel, Living in Diz, for some kind of time, you've been enjoying Disney through the eyes of our family. So what about enjoying Disney through your own eyes? How can you accomplish that? You'll want to contact Victor Naraki. With over a decade of helping people find the homes of their dreams right near Disney, Victor is the perfect realtor of La Rosa Realty Horizons to help you find the home of your dreams. Simply go to DisneyAtYourDoorstep.com. That's DisneyAtYourDoorstep.com. And don't forget to tell him that Living in Diz sent you. I'm the goat of Disney. I didn't ask for that title. I was given it. Or maybe I earned it. So on the previous Diz Pod, what we did was something that I will do leading up to every festival now, which is preview the top 10 food booths that we're going to attack. And what I like to do to follow up with that is follow up on those food booths and talk to you about what we actually thought of those foods. So this past Wednesdays, we were able to hit two booths. One of them I kind of cheated on, and what I say, why I say cheated on it is I went to a food booth that uh, I love. And I would say that that area of food booth near Test Track is becoming one of my favorites because they're really consistent in having a lot of great dishes. And they had their traditional shrimp and grits, which I. I can't help it. I always think of Dole Whip Dave when I eat those because he treated me to those once with his wife, Lori. And it wasn't the first time I had it, but it they're just so good. They're just so good. It gives me that, you know, makes me think of that memory. So I went there and I got that. So needless to say, shrimp and grits, five out of five Mickey's, really, really easy. Once again, that was made up of blackened shrimp and cheddar cheese grits with brown gravy and sweet corn salsa there had to be some kind of spice on the shrimp because i don't know i felt like i could taste it and that is what really brings it all together and for me i mentioned this the other night that's what makes it for me the best shrimp that i've ever had so easy slam dunk five out of five mickeys for that one then I only had time for one more booth and time was tight if we wanted to watch Harmonious, the nighttime spectacular. So grabbed the food, ate it all, reviewed it well, at least I think I did. And this is what I thought about that. I think the Magnolia Terrace for a name is a spectacular name. I think it's really cool. So I got three out of the four things there. The reason why I didn't get the fourth is because I just had gumbo twice pre in previous streams from uh, Hollywood Studios. So I just wanted to mix it up and get something different. But we will try that spicy chicken gumbo maybe next time. The three things I tried was the muffaletta panini with ham, salami, mortadella, provolone, and Swiss with olive salad as well as the crawfish pie and the bananas foster bread pudding. With the muffaletta, oh, you know what? It was the best item there. I mean, you look at it and you hold it in your hand. It just looks like a, yeah, maybe a four inch cut section, you know, that you'd get at Subway maybe or your local sub shop. 
But here's the difference. It had melted cheese, two kinds of cheese, provolone and Swiss. And it had your meats, the ham, the salami. And I wouldn't really order that in a million years. Cold. I'm picky like that with ham and salami, I guess. So to have this all perfectly melted together and served warmly, this was a five out of five Mickey's. And if the olives weren't accompanying it, I feel like it wouldn't have done what it did for me to give this a five out of five. And what gives it a five out of five is I thought that the olives kind of neutralized the ham and the salami. I don't know. It's just too strong for me in a sandwich, and I just don't like those in a sandwich. But that all together, I'll be getting that again. Moving on to the crawfish pie, I would have given the crawfish pie a 5 out of 5 Mickey's. Served warm. It looked like it was like on top. Yeah, I guess it was a pie covering. Uh, browned very nicely. Cakey. And it was all very, very tasty inside. You kind of had the same spices, I feel like, as you had the the previous dish tried earlier in the evening being the shrimp and grits. Really good, but I felt like as I got into it a little bit, it got a little bit fishy for me. So that's why I had to drop it down to four out of five. I don't like things that are too fishy. I like my fish, but it can't be fishy. And lastly, the Bananas Foster was the biggest letdown of the day. And I figured out why. I like the bananas. I like the bread pudding part of it. But I tried this with Samantha Lowe as well. And she took one bite. She's like, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm like, what? <laughs> and she's like, uh-uh. So I got into it a little bit. And as I did, and the flavor started to come through more, I was like, what is this taste I don't like? And... I guess if you like rum, then you're going to like this. If you like rum, bananas, bread pudding, this is the thing for you. I have to say I probably would, for me, I'd put that down to a two out of five Mickey's. But that's my lack of desire of taste for something in that. I think if you like those things, you'd probably rate it at least a four out of five Mickey's. So if you do, go for it. If you don't, Stay away, and we will find some other desserts worthy of five out of five Mickeys for you. All right. I am really, really excited to not only do one scene, I, I think I'm going to do two. And this is my ode, my love for James Cameron and his creativity. And I am such a huge fan of Titanic the movie. So well written. I think the story was very well done. And I love the interaction with Jack and, you know, with uh, Rose and their first real interaction when Rose freaks out and ends up climbing over the railing of Titanic. I mean, it's such a compelling scene. And yeah, I mean, this is their first time together. And I just feel like there's already connections being made without them even realizing it. So here it is. It is the poop deck scene at night from Titanic. Jack is kicked back on one of the benches, gazing at the stars, blazing glorious overhead, thinking artist thoughts and smoking a cigarette. Hearing something, he turns as Rose runs up the stairs from the well deck. They are the only two on the stern deck, except for Quartermaster Rowe, 20 feet above them on the docking bridge catwalk. She doesn't see Jack in the shadows and runs past him. Tracking with Rose as he runs across the deserted fantail, her breath hitches in an occasional sob, which she suppresses. Rose slams against the base of the stern flagpole and clings there, panting. She stares out to the black water, then starts to climb over the railing. 
She has to hitch her long dress way up, and climbing is clumsy. Moving methodically, she turns her body and gets her heels on the white-painted gunwale. Sixty feet below her, the massive propellers are churning the Atlantic into white foam, and a ghostly wake trails off toward the horizon. In a low angle, we see Rose standing like a figurehead in reverse. Below are the huge letters of the name Titanic. She leans out, her arms straightening, looking down hypnotized into the vortex below her. Her dress and hair are lifted by the wind of the ship's movement. The only sound above the rush of water below is the flutter and snap of the big Union Jack right above her. Jack. Don't do it. She whips her head around at the sound of his voice. It takes a second for her eyes to focus. Rose. Stay back. Don't come any closer. Jack sees the tear tracks on her cheeks in the faint glow of the stern running lights. Jack. Take my hand. I'll pull you back in. Rose. No. Stay where you are. I mean it. I'll let go. Jack. No, you won't. Rose. What do you mean, no, I won't? Don't presume to tell me what I will do and will not do. You don't know me. Jack. You would have done it already. Now, come on. Take my hand. Rose is confused now. She can't see him very well through the tears, so she wipes them with one hand, almost losing her balance. Rose. You're distracting me. Go away. Jack. I can't. I'm involved now. If you let go, I have to jump in after you. Rose. Don't be absurd. You'll be killed. He takes off his jacket. Jack. I'm a good swimmer. He starts unlacing his left shoe. Rose. The fall alone will kill you. Jack. It would hurt. I'm not saying it wouldn't. To be honest, I'm a lot more concerned about that water down there being so cold. She looks down. The reality factor of what she is doing is sinking in. Rose. How cold? Jack, continuing to take off his shoes. Freezing? Maybe a couple of degrees over? Ever been to Wisconsin? Rose is perplexed. Rose. No? Jack. Well, they have some of the coldest winters around, and I grew up there near Chippewa Falls. Once when I was a kid, me and my father... We're ice fishing on Lake Wasoda. Ice fishing's where you chop the hole in the rose. I know what ice fishing is. Jack. Sorry. Just, you look kind of like an indoor girl. Anyway, I went through some thin ice, and I'm telling you, water that cold, like that right down there, it hits you like a thousand knives all over your body. You can't breathe. You can't think. At least, not about anything but the pain. Jack finishes taking off his shoes. Which is why I'm not looking forward to jumping in there after you. But like I said, I don't see a choice. I guess... I'm kind of hoping you'll come back over the rail and get me off the hook here. Rose, you're crazy. Jack, that's what everybody says. But with all due respect, I'm not the one hanging off the back of a ship here. We will end that scene there. That is such a fun scene to watch and such a fun scene to do. Let's move on to the second scene that I'd like to do, which is when Jack has the dinner with Rose's family and company. 
the uppity ups having dinner with the boy from under the bridge i just love how jack takes control of the situation and it doesn't matter what your social status is he just takes control let's listen in as i perform jack and the others at the dinner scene let's pick it up in the dining saloon close on ruth ruth tell us of the accommodations in steerage mr dawson i hear they're quite good on this ship with a wider shot of the table jack is seated opposite of rose who is flanked by cal and thomas andrews also at the table are molly brown ismay colonel gracie the countess guggenheim madame aubert and the asters rose motions surreptitiously for jack to take the napkin off his plate cal mr dawson is joining us from third class he was of some assistance to my fiance last night we see whispers exchange jack becomes the subject of furtive glances now they're all feeling terribly liberal and dangerous guggenheim in a low tone to madame aubert guggenheim what is hockley hoping to prove bringing this bohemian up here waiter to jack how do you take your caviar sir cal answering for jack just a soup con of lemon to jack smiling it improves the flavor with the champagne jack no caviar for me thanks looks to cal never did like it much he looks at rose poker faced and he smiles ruth and exactly where do you live mr dawson jack well right now my address is the rms titanic after that i'm on god's good humor salad is served jack reaches for the fish fork rose gives him a look and he picks up the salad fork prompting him with her eyes he changes forks ruth you find that sort of ruthless existence appealing do you jack well it's a big world and i want to see it all before i go my father was always talking about going to the ocean he died in the town he was born in and never did see it you can't wait around because you never know what hand you're going to get dealt next see my folks died in a fire when i was 15 and i've been on the road since something like that teaches you to take life as it comes at you to make each day count molly brown raises her glass in a salute molly well molly well said jack colonel gracie here here rose raises her glass looking at jack rose to making it count ruth annoyed that jack has scored a point presses him further ruth how is it that you have the means to travel mr dawson jack i work my way around from place to place tramp steamers and such i won my ticket on titanic here in a lucky hand at poker he glances at rose a very lucky hand gracie all life is a game of luck cal a real man makes his own luck archie rose notices that thomas andrews sitting next to her is writing in his notebook completely ignoring the conversation rose mr andrews what are you doing i see you everywhere writing in this little book grabs it and reads increase number of screws and hat hooks from two to three you built the biggest ship in the world and this preoccupies you andrew smiles sheepishly ismay he knows every rivet in her don't you thomas andrews all three million of them ismay his blood and soul are in the ship she may be mine on paper but in the eyes of god she belongs to thomas andrews rose your ship is a wonder mr andrews truly 
Andrews. Thank you, Rose. That concludes two of my favorite scenes in time. And now, Conversations with Neil. All right, sitting here with my guy, Neil, one of my favorite people in the entire world. What's up, Neil? Nothing much. Uh, another The end of another week. That's what's up. Yeah, end of, end of another week, which puts us that close, that much closer to a Saturdays. And on this particular Saturdays, it's, I'm calling it Tron Saturdays. <laughs> We're going to finally get to ride Tron. You will be experiencing the newest Disney attraction, and I'm sure you're going to love it. Yeah, I don't think I'll be disappointed. I can say that I had a epiphany last night, and I did text Neil to let him know that I did figure out a way to stream Tron because it was definitely bumming me out all week that I could not find the perfect equipment to do it but now we have it so it's do or die the only thing that can fail now is is the signal and hopefully we have two chances to ride it hopefully we nail it the first time and everyone can enjoy watching it live two times in a row but if not if we get one out of two then that's not so bad either well let's hope you're successful tomorrow yeah, that'll be interesting because I also don't know if anyone has actually streamed it live. All I know is people have gone on and they've used a GoPro to show the video later. When I was right. live the other day, pretty sure someone in chat said that there were two people that live streamed it, but I'm not quite sure. You know, we don't really, we don't set out ever to do anything to be the first to do it. But if you are, and I think we have been the first to do certain things, I, I know we have, um, it's a cool feeling. It's good to say it. You know, it's good. It's good to say it when you're live now and then, like, we are the first to do this. Um, right. Whether, you know, I was going to do this on Saturday, March 4th, whether 10 people went before me or a thousand people go after me. <laughs> so if we're the first ones, that's awesome. Um, and like you said, you you researched it. So unless we're missing something. I guess we will be the first. Maybe when we're live tomorrow, we'll we'll ask the chat and say, hey, are we missing anything here? Did anybody actually show live footage while they were doing it? Yes. I mean, they could have left their phones on, but I believe either their phone was in the pocket or there is a little glove box on the top of the cycle where you can put keys. You could put your phone if you're wearing headsets because these things will fall out. There's no doubt about it uh, based on going on it. If you have something that could fall out, it will. And mm -hmm. it could be a bummer. You're going fast. You're going high. I, I don't think a phone can survive. I don't think, I, I don't think a phone could survive falling besides the fact that literally you're going when you're outside very close to where the people are walking. As you've wow. seen, you know, without even going on it. So yeah. if your phone goes flying or your keys or something, you could you could hurt somebody. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. So we'll see. Let we're gonna hope for the best. I mean, we have a long list. I can make a long list of things that we have tried that either no one has tried or people had difficulty doing it. And we just put it out there. We take a risk and we do it. And boy, I have to say, I feel like we've been 100% successful. You know, whether it's climbing the mountain or or climbing a dormant volcano in Hawaii, <laughs> not knowing what the signal's going to be with hundreds of people watching, you know, to going to Typhoon Lagoon at night and throwing the camera in a bag and getting a perfect stream with very lim limited lag that night. Those are the things we do and you get rewarded by it. So, yes. Well, you know, I mean, when they made the restrictions on Space Mountain, you figured out a way to go ahead and, and do it. So that was pretty cool. It was in that, to my knowledge, I believe only us and um, Josh 
from Resort TV One has done it. And to my knowledge, I don't think Josh has gone back to do it. And I've done it twice. So um, who knows? We might do it tomorrow. I mean, we have the equipment. So yes. Yes. might, I, you know, to be honest, I'm thinking about maybe doing that. You know, you DAS, if you DAS Space Mountain while you're doing Tron, we may be able to go back to back ride streams. With, that would be very cool. I mean, you, you know, I guess, the, you know, most people don't want to take the time to go ahead and, and rig this up. And, you know, when, when you're willing to take the time, I think the viewers appreciate it. They know they're, they're seeing something they won't see anymore. I think you're right. I think you're right. That Space Mountain becomes something special for our channel because I don't know. I just feel like I don't think the masses are ever going to do it now. If they were, they'd be doing it. Right. Um, and I and I think the excitement of even thinking about doing it is gone for people now. So uh, Space Mountain just might belong to living in Diz in an occasional resort TV, resort TV one. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. But either way, it's pretty cool that you're able to do it. I'm always trying to do what I can to bring our viewers, our family members, the most that we can squeeze out of our channel. Yes, and and there's a lot of persistency here, because uh, you know if if it once you fail, try 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 again, and even if it's time consuming and the pain in the neck to do this, which obviously many people are not willing to go through the hassle. Right. They're willing to go and, through the hassle, and you know it's 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 cool for the people who are watching. Uh, they, I, like you said, that I I find that they must appreciate that. Why wouldn't they appreciate when somebody's going out of the way for them? Wait till you see how I guinea rigged this thing, and Jillian and I rehearsed how to put this sucker on as quickly as possible because it's not traditional. It's not the way it's supposed to be worn, but it's going to be super secure and it's going to be positioned where I need it to be positioned. <laughs> Good. Uh, it's going to be great then. Yeah, Let's... it'll be it'll be exciting, you know, as it's all unfolding, you know. By the way, I am passing up doing something else for riding Tron tomorrow, you know. Just received an email a little bit ago. It actually came at 8 a.m. this morning, but or 8.30 and I was just going through my email a little bit ago, and it was a casting call to be a NASA control operator for a NASA movie. So I don't know what the title was going to be, but it would it was a six a.m. roll call tomorrow morning. <laughs> was it, was it over at the space center? It was. It was it's day day fifty six or something of filming of a movie, and I said, well. I guess I'd rather ride Tron. So that's that's pretty cool because uh, SpaceX actually sent uh, another crew up to the space station the other night, which we watched yes. from the window. <laughs> yeah, it was. People don't neat. realize it's so cool to be able to walk out on your lawn and just look at the moon, or not look at the moon, but watch these flights take off from your lawn. From a city boy, you know, growing up in the North, great Northeast to ever think I would even see a rocket launch, never mind from my front yard, is crazy. It is crazy. Uh, it, it, and and it, to this day, you know, uh, I mean, I, I do remember Neil Armstrong landing on the moon. Um, I, I, lo I love watching the stuff about space. And what humans have done, being able to look outside over the trees and see that red ball of flame, if there, especially if there are humans on it, going straight up into the sky, it's, it's just, there's nothing much like it. And you wonder, you just wonder, you know, what do they feel? Somebody like me who goes on Tron one time and says, <laughs> okay, that's it for me, you know, and goes on Guardians of the Galaxy and says, I've had enough. And when I'm on a plane, I wish I was on the ground. These folks are on top of a rocket, a, a ball of flame going into the sky. 
It's incredible. They are courageous. Maybe they're crazy, but you know what? What they do, it just makes humanity better. You know, I know a lot of people don't talk about the money and all that. You know what? Human beings are meant to stretch what they can do, go as far as they can go, uh, experience as much as they can experience. And if you make cuts, if you make cuts in life and you continuously look at the price tag for things, you never advance. And, And so many great things have come from it. Thank you so much, Neil, for that fun exchange and so much insight back and forth. Uh, Again, Neil and I have some of the greatest conversations, I think, that are so interesting, and uh, that's why he's here. I think that they are so worth it to record for the podcast, and like I've said before, we'll get Neil on each and every week as much as possible and uh, continue to enjoy his company. There is... A much longer section to this conversation with Neil. In fact, it was so long that I am going to release a bonus podcast. Oh, we'll probably say this this one drops on Mondays. So let's drop this one on Thursday. And uh, y'all will have your bonus podcast. The first one ever. Thank you so much for sticking with us for another DizPod. Before we go, I want to remind you, go to your app store and check out the Swell app, S-W-E-L-L. It's where we drop five-minute podcasts two to three times a week minimum. And just look us up, all one word, living in Diz. If you want just a little bit more Diz extra, a little bit of five minutes here and there during the week, check that out. Also, if you feel compelled to contribute to what we're doing to continue to make these products better and better and better, whether it's the live streams on YouTube or right here on the DizPod, join the Diz Club or Patreon or both. And the best way to do that is just go to the channel, look at the description of any live stream, click on the links, and there you go. Make sure you check out livingindiz.com. It's your one-stop shop for everything living in Diz. You can drop your email in there so that you are alerted every time we go live or any other living in Diz news. The Diz shop is also located there. You get our three stream schedule if you want to look ahead and much, much more. Livingindiz.com, built by me, powered by Diz Tech. Also, if you want to send questions for the DizPod or want to get a hold of me in any way, simply go to livingindiz at gmail.com and we will be sure to answer your questions. You can also send letters of concerns or thanks. We get those too and uh, certainly include questions for the podcast. We would love to include questions from you and we will read your name on the podcast if you so wish. For now, for Mushu and Jacob and Jillian and Tammy, I'm Corey from Living in Diz, and we'll see you on the next pod.